What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. And that's the point, is that a lot of the people that want to visit the Amazon and don't want to suffer through the bugs and the mud and the blood. Um, the other thing that we're seeing on our river right now is that they're cutting down the ironwood trees. And so these macaws, the red and green macaws, nest almost exclusively in these ironwood trees. And so you have a thousand year old ironwood tree. We made the world's tallest luxury tree house, which yeah, is, thing is amazing, though. up above the canopy, 110 feet, looking out over the Jungle Keepers Reserve. You have air conditioning, running water, toilet, everything you need. How often have Even you slept hot water. there? Oh, me and my girlfriend spent like a week up there. Oh, that sounds Oh, yeah. Romantic. Like we're like, <laughs> we just, we didn't even sleep inside the structure. We just you put never her, left. We never. Yeah. <laughs> in the daytime, you, in the daytime, you want to go down. Oh, and, and it even some... has a mosquito thing around it? Yeah, so you're in an air conditioned room with a mosquito net. So you're like triple safe. So you're fucking without the mosquitoes. That's good. You're not, you don't have mosquitoes there, but we were not in the room. Now I put a. We, oh, no, you went. You I did it see on the, the wood. I want to see the stars, man. <laughs> I want to see the stars. This is fucking amazing. How long did it take to build? Uh, about three months. That. That's it. Uh, to yes. build that yeah, thing all the way up but, there. But we have we that we have a team right now that's insane. We have who's your team? Spider Man, <laughs> JJ, Mosin, Stefan, my friend Lee. We all. We all just we brought in this team of guys that builds tree houses all over the world. All over the world, how we got did, Pico, Victor, all the, they, they built the staircase, went up in a spiral. The first <gasps> half half of the cost of building this thing was the it, it was like it was like building the pyramids. We had to bring it from the river <laughs> up to the thing, and then it, this spiral staircase started going up towards the canopy. Did well, the wood weigh fucking twelve tons? Uh, I did try carrying one of the beams that they used to make the staircase, and it was a 15 foot, I want to say six by six of tropical hardwood. 15 feet is like this room. There, yeah, but th this this wood no, right but, here is but, very similar. But six by six, this is a two by six. Right. So you're talking about like a pillar. Right. That thing weighs. It's like some Noah's Ark shit. 300 pounds, and yeah. these guys were putting it on their back single at a time and carrying it up. Up the spiral staircase <sighs> that they No, no, built. not the spiral staircase, but up from the river up. Cause this is like a promontory above the river. What? A what? Uh, this is a place where the terra firma forest ends and then the land drops down into the river basin. So okay, the reason in English. This, the reason this tree looks out across the rest of the jungle is cause it's at the edge of a cliff. So it's not that high up. It is, it's a very high tree. It's, it's high like up, but it's not high up off the ground below it. It's double. It's, it's, so here, look at this. Look at, here's, here's the jungle. Here's the tree. But then the jungle does this. We just chose a big tree that was 140 feet tall. So yeah, so you still- It's the, a huge tree, but it's at a spot scary. where the jungle goes down. Nope, this is even scarier. So my question is though, did they use a crane to no. fucking build up there? Or no. they, they built a staircase and walked up to the top and started hammering? No, this was all ropes, pulleys, people. Uh, we had like an ox cart that, that, that we had. We had an amazing Did team. they have a platform up there that they could stand on? No. The first time we climbed the tree, it was just ropes. The first time that tree you was climbed. You people are out of your fucking mind. Dude, we had to climb up the vines on the tree to get to the top. I, you like Tarzan climbed up we, vines? Yes. Yes. 100%. That's how this we got up Darwinism. to this tree. This is Darwinism at its finest. I don't know how you guys aren't dead. Um, there's actually an even bigger strangler fig in the forest, and we were out on a hike a few weeks ago, actually, and I had never seen this tree before. I found a new tree, and this tree completely covered in strangler fig, and I look at this tree, and I'm like, oh, my God. It's so easy to climb. Like, it's not – like, it's big, juggy, hand holds, plenty of footholds, and I go from zero – to the canopy 150 feet up i'm on i'm on the same eye level as spider monkeys i literally get up there and the spider monkey looks over at me <laughs> you can just tell he's like wait what <laughs> the spider monkey like did this double take he's, he's like, like what are you fellas they can climb <laughs> oh <Yo, laughs> shit <laughs> um but it's it's just crazy because some of these trees have such and i you know as, as i'm climbing too i'm going okay this is like i'm like free soloing a amazon tree and i'm going is this you know, I'm at, to what degree am I putting my life in danger right now? And I said, this tree, this particular tree was so easy to climb. It, it was like a ladder. I mean, yeah, it's 150 feet, but, uh, you know, two points of contact. So you don't times. get afraid of heights? I get afraid of heights if I'm not in control. Now, if I stuck my hand in a hole and bees came out into my face, am I dead? Probably. But if nothing goes wrong, <laughs> 
you just you know if you sneeze you die no but the, this this is completely safe the uh the guys who made it made the 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 architects made it so that the spiral staircase is completely closed in the everything's at regulation height the this you could bring you know toddlers up there this is anybody could go up to the treehouse and that's the point and that's the point is that a lot of the people that want to visit the amazon and don't want to suffer through the bugs and the mud and the blood you go up here you go in the air conditioning get brought coffee in the morning you take some pictures of macaws flying across the sunrise and like it's a much chiller way and here's the interesting thing we've never had access to the rainforest canopy like this traditionally if scientists wanted to access the canopy of the rainforest you had to shoot an arrow with a with piece of like fishing line over it, pull your ropes, climb up to the canopy. You're on ropes. You have helmets on. You're swinging between the trees. It's it's something you can only maintain for a few hours. This is a time now you can actually sit in the canopy, spend time up there. So the information that we're gonna get, the we're already seeing. I can't I can't actually talk about it yet, but we're seeing species up here that you don't see on the ground. You can't talk about it. No, because what are you, we like haven't code of silence because we haven't published anything yet. Oh. We're seeing species up there that we don't see on the ground. I'll tell you off air. Okay. But we're seeing things I'll that we don't sure even- I'll make sure the recorders are still we, we don't even know what they are. We're finding, we're adding tons of bird species. This was just every morning. Now, if you had like a logger terrorist who was pissed at you and they wanted to come <sighs> cut down this tree, how fast could they cut through the trunk down there and everyone up top is dead? If they had a, like a really nice- Yeah, like pro, a nice one. Like a nice I'm logger. I'm a nice terrorist. I got a lot of money. Um, Like any respectable one. Um, Probably four hours. I mean, right, it's, a, so it's, a, be, it's a big goddamn you'd, tree. You'd be able to get down before they did it. The bottom of that tree would not fit in this room. Like the bottom right, of that tree, you'd need like sure. four of the four of this room. That would have been a real hole in your tourist attraction. <laughs> so like, yeah, how's this for a headline? That is crazy though. That no, view is- that, that view, when you wake up to that, or also the Milky Way. Is that, is that a painting? What? Why does that look like- all right, it's happening live, everybody. Julian Dory is calling bullshit on my treehouse. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm wondering if that's a real picture that then someone like painted over. No, no, no. It's just it's a drone shot, and I think it was very low light early morning, so the picture's smooth. Don't you have a video of it? I somewhere, yeah, somewhere there's I don't know where, but it's there. All right, we'll find. We'll find. Is there a video on YouTube of it? Bullshit. Um, no, I wasn't calling no, bullshit. No, I thought no, someone no, had know, painted that for no, me. No, no, no. Nobody painted it. Interesting. Yeah, that that wow. No, it's really it's really insane. I've never seen again. It's like a new it's a new level unlocked. We never we never I've I've been to canopy platforms and you walk up in the middle of the day and it's hot. It's three p.m. and you're standing on this thing and you're sweating and you're like, oh my god, you're like this is amazing. You look, you walk. Okay, great. You go back down. The wildlife is out at dawn and at dusk. Most of the wildlife mm -hmm. in the Amazon is crepuscular, and so cur 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 what? So there's nocturnal, diurnal, and crepuscular. Nocturnals at night, diurnals in the day, crepuscular is in the in-betweens and the transitions. So something- So it, it's, it, they don't identify as nocturnal. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, for the in-between species, um, like, a, like a leopard is crepuscular. They're active at dawn and dusk. That's, mm. their, that's their, their prime time. And that's most species because that's when in the, in the, in the morning- you get the the rush. You hear it at like four thirty in the morning. All of a sudden, the howler monkey, oh, your howler monkey's going off, and all of a sudden, the parrots start up, and then the macaws and the toucans, and it's just like everyone starts turning on, and you hear all the calls coming across the jungle. Yeah. It's insane. We would wake up, and there'd just be that red sun coming up the uh, over the horizon, That's amazing. and the whole jungle's turning on. It's just like a symphony. It's so exciting. The what? first day I woke up. I like woke up and like we'd put the alarm and I was like, yo, we'll get up at like four, like five in the morning, right? Yeah, we, nobody wants to wake up at five in the morning. And I like opened my, I like looked and I went, holy shit. I like, we like look at the sunrise, like the sun, it's a whole different thing. It's, it's a whole different too. thing. What the fuck are we doing every day? We wake up, we wait until it's 9 a.m. before we get outside. It's like when you look at the sun coming around planet earth. Mm. <gasps> It's got to release some amazing hormones in your brain. Holy seeing shit. That. Also, it's like, again, what world are we in? Like, we forget. Listening to all the birds wake up. You're like, yeah. it's like roll call. It's like, all right, morning. Ch -ch -ch. Toucan, macaw, mm. fly catchers. Like, everybody's sounding off. Everybody's starting to communicate with each other. The monkeys, you hear the, the, the branches start shaking because the monkeys are moving. Everybody's, all of a sudden, the whole jungle turns on. And it's like, holy shit, the lights just went on on planet Earth. And it's like a everybody symphony. starts moving. Yep. It's and amazing. the crazy thing is at night, you can hear when when things start 
winding down and you start hearing less toucans, less macaws, you start hearing less cicadas. And then all of a sudden you hear that first, you'll hear the first frog and you're like, it's nighttime, it's mm. coming. And then like the tinamous will come and they're like a type of whistling bird. And all of a sudden you're like, oh shit. They just changed shifts and went from day shift to night shift. It's so crazy. The jungle, you can hear that change happening. That's incredible. It's absolutely insane. What's what is a macaw again? That's the one you macaw keep is saying, the largest of the parrots. Macaw is just a big, colorful parrot. I believe there's about can sixteen. Talk? They can say some words, but I don't. I don't actually think that that rate's really high on the list of animal intelligence because oh, wow. that's just really just mimicry. They yeah, are yeah, very, yeah, yeah. they're it's not very intelligent, intelligent, very intelligent birds. Because parrots like aren't very smart. Parrots are very smart, but it's not like primate yeah, yeah, but or it's, yeah, cetacean yeah, exactly. or. Wow. So, so that's if you had just shown green. that to me and yeah. not said macaw, I would have said, oh, it's a parrot. Well, they're the largest of the parrots. So all. I thought I, I misheard you. I thought you said like. All parrots are macaws, like but not all macaws are parrots. No, that that's the that's the inverse. Don't listen to me on that one. Any, anybody. They are beautiful. They are beautiful. That's a red and green, a blue and yellow. And what, um, what do they eat? Nuts. They'll eat a lot of Brazil nuts. Um they're also endangered pretty much throughout their range. So we used to have macaws like through Mexico and Belize and down through Costa Rica. And of the 16 species, 16 or 17 species of macaws, I think most of them are endangered or extinct. Spix's macaws, which is like the movie. Why is that? Because as soon as people realize that they, I mean, native cultures have always used those feathers. Um, Christopher mm -hmm. Columbus actually brought a few pairs of macaws back to the Queen God of Spain to Poor show man. that he had come to the new world. And ever since then, people have been obsessed with their plumage. There's, I mean, it's such beautiful feathers. You got these, you know, two or three foot long, beautiful ta tail feathers. And so people want macaw plumage. Is there anything that guy didn't kill? Um, the other thing that we're seeing on our river right now is that they're cutting down the ironwood trees. And so these macaws, the red and green macaws nest almost exclusively in these ironwood trees. And so you have a thousand year old ironwood tree. Uh, just look up a red and green macaw. It's the first one that you pulled up. Red and green macaw ironwood tree? Uh, you could try that, yeah. Okay. Probably, I feel like I'm the only person on the internet talking about it. It's probably just gonna be. Um, yeah, there it is. First one? Yeah, the first top left is an oh. ironwood high res, yeah. Dipteryx micranthia. Whoa. Yeah, and so you but you need an ancient ironwood. You need a giant, massive, thousand-year-old, five hundred-year-old ironwood tree, because that's the type where the branches break off and it makes a hole, and the macaws nest almost exclusively in that hole. But now, once they identify that as a nesting site, generations of macaws will use it, and each year mm -hmm. only seventeen to twenty percent of the macaw population reproduces because there's limited real estate. So when a logger comes in and cuts an ironwood tree that has a seven year, 700 year old macaw generating hole in it, they've cut generations of macaws down. And so the population is exponentially affected. And so there you go. There's, that's something we see all the time in the jungle keepers reserve. We'll see healthy ancient ironwood trees that have macaws just coming out of them. So Sometimes I have trouble picturing this because I'm not there and I can't see it. But unfortunately, you've seen a million times over yeah. a tree get cut down out mm. there. And these trees, 150 feet tall, mm -hmm. all kinds of species yep. living in it. How much of it is creatures die on the fall of the tree because they're stuck in the tree and boom, they're dead versus creatures die because their home is taken from them and then they have nowhere to go? That's both. I mean, if you have a an ironwood tree like that, you have literally thousands of species living on it. Reptiles, amphibians, birds, mammals, lichen, leafcutter ants, bees, wasps, everything. There's so many things living on this tree. And you got to think, if that tree is a thousand years old, when Columbus, World War I, World War II, doesn't matter, whatever you can really think of happened, that tree was standing in the forest. Mm -hmm. And so that complex ecosystem has created this skyscraper of life that, and this is where once we lose the old growth forest, first of all, that's where most of the carbon of a forest is contained in the ancient hardwoods. That's also where most of the biodiversity is. And so once you cut that, it's going to be 500 years before you get another one of those. And so that's why protecting the forest that's already 
ancient, the f- before it's too late. You know, you hear people about, oh, we have to replant the forest. We have to reestablish. That's fine. Then, that's, I mean, that's, and that's important. Work, yeah. In a lot of places, it's important, but you're never going to get back no. what you had. You know, it's it's like your family dies in a bus accident. And somebody goes, oh, we'll get you some more humans. It's like, well, it's, yeah, it's and, not the same. But also, I and I've repeated this on so many podcasts since you've been in here, because I think it's something we all need to think about that I was unaware of until you told me about it. When you're talking about the wood mm. that is used when they're taking these trees down and then, you know, it's being used in product. You had said you had one guy who is a donor towards Jungle Keepers who's a major contractor, and he's talked about how if you used new tree wood, so trees planted in the last 30 years, you'd have to – and you used it for a house. You'd have to replace the base of that house within a decade, whereas it's the old trees that Mm -hmm. actually will hold the house up forever or for a very long time. And so even if you are planting new trees back, you're planting trees that take a long time to grow, a long time to form strength, and you're not solving the problem of, oh, now here's trees you guys can come knock down because they're still going to go knock down the old ones because those are the ones that are actually most vibrant for them to be able to do what they want to do. Yeah. Unfortunately – they're valuable for the humans and the wildlife. That's the problem. We both want the same thing. Just like in South India, human humans need a lot of space. Elephants need a lot of space. It's the same thing. It's a clash of. Mm. But that's where I have to say after 17 years in on the front lines in India, Africa, Peru, in the Amazon, um, at this point, there's so many people doing such incredible work that we can – we can fix a lot of these problems. You know, if you if you if you can at this point, if we can't stop down shut down the ironwood tree market, we can't stop people from going out into the Amazon and cutting down massive if you look at an ironwood tree, if somebody said cut it down, it's not easy. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.